Jason Gilbo here with Robin Zyka taking a look at some GPP picks for tonight's slate. Uh, seven games. You and I, I mean, we like the slate. You know, there's kind of a lot going on. Um, I feel like people are kind of against it, too. I love it. Uh, there's no real clear cut ace. I mean, Carlos Martinez, he's a pretty good pitcher, but going into Cincinnati is a tough spot to pitch in itself and with their lineup. So there's a bunch of pitchers to pick on tonight, a couple gas cans as well, but it's just a great slate all around, in my opinion. Yeah, it's fun. And I mean, we do have some positions that are pretty weak as far as, you know, middle infield catcher's not the strong, but there's a couple options that we do like. Yeah, there are. Uh, spe- specifically, second base and uh, shortstop are pretty rough, but we- we'll find it to make it work. Uh, we'll jump into catcher here first. Uh, Tyler Flowers just continues to hit the ball well. I mean, hitting over 400 over the last two weeks. Um, obviously, the 365 average isn't going to hold, but uh, he faces another weak, uh, weak arm at home. Um, Braves offense in another good spot here. It is. They're implied uh, 5.2 runs against Nick Pavetta, who uh, he's faced 55 righties this season, and he's given up five four months to them already. So I like the righty power bats in the Braves, and Tyler Flowers is definitely one of them. Yep. Uh, then you and I, I mean, we basically just nailed it down to him and Salvador Perez. Uh, and Perez, I mean, extremely cheap on DraftKings, 2-9. He's been struggling a little bit, but, you know, a matchup against Fires is just too good to pass up. He's allowed 12 home runs to righties this year, 490 Woba. Um, you know, for once, the Royals are actually a, a decent option. Yeah, Fires, uh, it's, it's rough against the righties this year. And uh, Salvador Perez, uh, historically, he's been better against lefties, but this season he's been hitting righties pretty well with a Woba of 355 against them. So, on a slate where catching is uh, pretty tough to find, he's not a bad option for uh, some upside. Oh, definitely not. Anyone else you like? Not really. I mean, you could look at guys like Josh Fegley against a lefty, but when a righty comes out of the pen, he'll probably get pinch hit for. So it, you can just take your chances on that. Yeah, no, I didn't see anyone else that really popped out. I mean, you got the Cubs game with the wind blowing in, so Real Muto and Contreras not really on my radar. Yeah, I like Real Muto for cash, but not for tournaments. Uh, first base, uh, Eric Thames going against Samarja. Uh, I don't mind Samarja tonight, but obviously I think Thames is the one bat that I'm really worried about just with that huge power. Yeah, especially with Travis Shaw at the lineup tonight, unfortunately. Uh, Eric Thames is the big lefty bat for the Brewers. Uh, Samarja has given up a Woba of 380 to lefties, and Thames is an ISO of 301 against righties this season. So and he's starting to hit his stride again. It might be a good spot to get him at a lower ownership. Yep, I like him. Uh, Ace bats come in tonight for me. I, I, I like him in a contrarian sense, especially Ryan Healy, who's just been on fire this year. Uh, solid numbers against lefties in his career, showing off some big power. Uh, Jay Happ, I mean, obviously not the arm that he was last year. Um, just been kind of average. I know he's been banged up with the uh, arm issue. So um, Ace bats might be a little sneaky tonight. They definitely have the power if not striking out. Uh, it's a good spot for them. Uh, what I'm looking at first base is Matt Carpenter. He's been uh, kind of cold lately uh, over the last couple weeks, but he gets a matchup against Asher Wojciechowski, who gave up four runs in four innings in his last start. Um, it's a great ballpark for him. I think this Cardinals uh, lineup is one of the best uh, spots to look for. Yep, I like Carpenter as well. Um, I, I think Matt Adams gets an honorable mention. I'm kind of curious to see the ownership between him and Carpenter, just given the both 3700 on DK. Yeah, at the same price. I mean, I think a lot of people will play Adams in the outfield and Carpenter at first base, but – yeah, definitely uh, at the same price, it's hard to choose. Yep. Uh, Any ones you're looking for? That's it. Uh, second base, this is definitely a weaker position. Um, not a ton of standout options. Uh, I don't mind Cesar Hernandez. Uh, I kind of like the Phillies offense. I don't mind the stack either. Um, I know we didn't talk about him before the show, but uh, not a bad option here now that I'm looking at it. No, not a bad option. Bartolo, he just throws meatballs left and right, and Cesar is going to be leading off. And I guess you can't really go wrong on tonight at second base because there's really no good option at all. Yeah, and Eric Sogar was the guy you were looking at, 3,100 on DK. Um will likely be leading off for the Brewers tonight. And this guy's been, as you said, I mean, you described him pesky. He is a pesky lefty. Yeah, he doesn't strike out, especially against righties, uh, even though Smarja has been pretty elite at striking guys out this year. Uh, lefties, he struggled a little bit. Um, Sogard, he's second base on DraftKings, but he's shortstop eligible on FanDuel, so you could fit him there as well. Um, yeah, like I, like you mentioned, he's a pesky lefty. Smarja giving up that 390 over to lefties. Uh, Sogard leading off, just not a bad spot for him. 
Nope. Uh, another guy to take a look at, Chad Pinder, likely be hitting second. Uh, over 200 ISO against lefties. Uh, this guy obviously is kind of a boomer bust play, but I, I don't think you're going to see a ton of ownership on him. Um, and like I said, I mean, A's, you know, big strikeout team, especially against left handers. So it's definitely boomer bust with these guys, but there is a lot of power. Yeah, there's a ton of power. This guy, Chad Pinder, came up on the optimizer one day. I threw him in my lineup and he hit a home run for me. I was stoked. So he's a guy with some pop. I. Uh, Hit a few home runs over the weekend, uh, over the last week. Um, a guy who I'm looking towards is D. Gordon on the Marlins. Um, the wind's blowing in at Wrigley. He's going against Eddie Butler, but if he can get on, he can steal a couple of bases, and he has been hitting the ball well lately. Yeah, I mean, hitting over 300 the last two weeks. Uh, I definitely don't mind him for that stolen base upside. Third base, uh, we got news, you know, Travis Shaw on paternity list, so he'll be out for tonight. Kind of a bummer. I mean, that's another lefty out of the Brewers lineup. I think that kind of really hurts him. It does. Uh, the Brewers, outside of Eric Thames and Eric Sogard, uh, I think Smarzer shuts them down, but they're going to come in really alone, uh, those two guys with Smarzer pitching, and he's going to be the chalk. Uh, our guy at third is Jed Jerko, Jerko against uh, the Reds. He's the top, basically the top option on the board. Third base is weak today. Uh, big power against righties. He has over 400 Wobo against them as well. So it's just a great spot. Yep, I love Jericho here. Uh, he definitely comes in as a top option for me. He's been by far the most consistent uh, St. Louis player. Um, and then with Shaw out, I mean, we both look towards Rendon against the lefty. Ryu's just so up and down. I'm, I'm not a big Ryu guy. Uh, came up with a reasonable hard contact rate to righties. Uh, doesn't miss a ton of bats. So um, Rendon, I mean, when he's hot, he's hot. Um, it's a good spot to use him. Yeah, I like this. Actually, the national stack as a very contrarian stack tonight. So Rendon uh, with Shaw being out tonight. Um, Rendon's just going to slot right in as the second best option on the slate. Yep. Uh, as far as other guys go, I mean, you know, I know Josh Donaldson gets a lefty. Uh, he's remotely priced. I mean, 4400 on, on DK is not that bad. Um, I, I feel like he might suck up a lot of ownership. I think he will just for the name and the lack of better options. Uh, I think him and Jerko get all the ownership. A guy who I'm looking towards in the cheap end, though, uh, on that Cardinals team as kind of a, he a little pivot from Jerko is uh, Paul DeJong. Um, he's 3,200 on DraftKings, and if you need salary saver, he does have some pop uh, in the minors. He was hitting home runs, and that's why they called him up. And he's in this ballpark it, with the wind blowing out a little bit. It's not a bad spot for him to potentially hit his first career home run. Oh, no, I definitely like that call. Uh, I think Mike Moustakis is an intriguing pivot as well. Uh, still on the cheaper side against Fires. Fires was first splits, but um, still, I mean, against left, he's given up a ton of home runs. He's already given up six. So um, Moustakis has big-time power from that side. I mean, over 200 ISO against righties. Uh, he'll be a guy I consider. Yeah, and the ballpark, too, will uh, lower his ownership. Yep. Uh, shortstop, I mean, you have Trey Turner. You have Carlos Gray. You have Zach Kozar has been red hot. Corey Seager. I mean, there's names, but... None of them stand out as guys. I, I mean, Correa is too expensive for me. I don't know. I might be going down here unless I have the extra cash. I think I'm going down too. Uh, we mentioned with Sogard uh, before second base in DraftKings, he's shortstop eligible in FanDuel, so he's not a bad option. Um, a player who is shortstop on both sides, who I'm looking towards, is Danby Sw Dansby Swanson. He's been swinging the bat better lately, and uh, against Nick Pavetta, who I mentioned before, gives up the long ball and over a 499 Woba to, to right as the season. With the Braves, the highest implied total on the slate, I mean, it's just a punt play position. Yeah, I'm with you. I, you know, DK makes it a little bit easier because they do have some other guys that are shortstop eligible, like Kike Hernandez and Ann Pinder. Um, but on Fandle, I'm with you. And, I mean, if you do have the extra cash to pay up, I mean, I, I think Carlos Correa is still the way to go, just given how hot he is, if you can fit him in. Yeah, and how bad Kennedy is uh, giving up almost in general. It's just... Grass eventually. Yeah. Uh, moving on to outfield, uh, Matt Camp, uh, awful day yesterday, 0 for 6. But um, I, I definitely think he gets back on track. I mean, he's been one of the hottest hitters in baseball this year. I feel like he's been underrated. He, he won't go overlooked on this slate, though. He won't, even after the 0 for 6 yesterday against Pavetta. Uh, the Braves are one of the best offenses on the board tonight. Like I said, highest implied Vegas total. And Kemp, he's just in a great spot to even just hit one out of the park off this dude. It's five whole months, a whole month every 11 batters he gives up. Yep. Uh, and you and I were talking, I mean, we expect Odubo Herrera to be the highest owned player on the slate just because he's super cheap. And, I mean, come off back-to-back -back really strong games, hitting second in the order against Bartolo Colon. Um, there's no reason that he won't be under 30% ownership. He is, Yeah, he's looked like absolute crap this entire season. But these last two days against the Giants, he has five extra base hits, including a home run, six RBIs. 
and he had a bad uh, – he had a big weekend. I'm hoping that's the start of something because I got him in all my season-long teams. I got him in daily, and he's cheap, and he's a good, good play in all formats. Uh, and this might be a nice – I mean, we're talking a lot of cheap guys. I'm not going to be afraid to leave – a fair amount of money on the table. I'm not either with uh, nowhere to really pay up on pitcher besides Carlos Martinez with his price. Uh, it's a good spot to get contrarian with the cheap bats. Yep. And I think a pair of Royals outfielders, I don't mind Lorenzo Cain, Jorge Bonifacio. Uh, Bonifacio carries a little bit more power upside than, than Cain does, but given that Mike fires his numbers against righties, um, I, I think we're going to get those two as you know contrarian options, probably less than 15% ownership. Oh, for sure. And then there's the outfielders on the other side of the game. You got Springer, Reddick, and Carlos Beltran. Beltran's actually been on fire lately. So uh, he's a guy who I usually overlook, but over the last couple of weeks, he's had uh, four home runs in the last two weeks. So yeah, finally really getting things going. Yeah, I mean, against Ian Kennedy, who he has seen multiple times before in his career, it's just a good spot for him and that team as a whole. Yep. Uh, I think Aaron Altair was a guy you were taking a look at, right? Yeah, he's a big power bat for the Phillies. Um, has an ISO of 231 against Rays this year. Bartolo just throws up meatballs with every single pitch that he throws. So Altair could definitely get a hold of one for uh, a one-off home run. Yep, I like that call. Um, I think that's where, I mean, Dexter Fowler's a guy I'll take a look at in the mid-price. Uh, as you said, Cardinals bats uh, in a good spot here, especially in that ballpark. Um, he's been a little bit more consistent than what piscotti has been doing, even though Piscotti's slowly starting to come around. Yeah, he is. I still prefer Piscotti against a lefty, but Dexter Fowler in this park, it's definitely a good spot. Yep. So, uh, anyone else you want to mention? That's it. All right. So, uh, let's wrap things up here with us. You can head over to DayFantasyCafe.com, check out our great tools and content. Yep. Good luck.